Module 3, Case Studies on Locally-Led Adaptation to Climate Change. Introduction to the Module. Welcome to the third module of this course on locally-led adaptation to climate change, focusing on case studies and examples. By the end of this module, you will be able to familiarize yourself with examples of LLA against climate change and learn some best practices. A number of case studies on various climate change adaptation policies and actions will be described and discussed. As you listen to the case studies and examples, you can process by giving attention to strategies incorporating LLA measures, gender equality, and social inclusion, and indigenous factors, particularly applying the various principles learned during the previous modules. In addition, you will also analyze if there is anything that should have been done better. In the previous sessions, we discussed the eight different principles on how communities were able to adapt to threats of climate change and gender equality and social inclusion. In this session, we will tackle different examples from around the world on how communities were able to cope and thrive despite the challenges brought about by the changing climate. Case studies and examples according to LLA principles. Empowering local communities with greater control over both financial resources and the decision-making process related to defining, prioritizing, designing, and executing adaptation initiatives is essential. This includes monitoring progress and assessing the effectiveness of these efforts. This is a key principle for ensuring that communities have the agency and capacity to address the unique challenges they face. Community assessments, such as the participatory resource profiling that actively involves local residents, including marginalized groups and vulnerable populations such as women, youth, and indigenous groups, to identify climate-related risks, vulnerabilities, and adaptation needs, empower and build trust in the community. This process fosters inclusiveness and prioritizes local knowledge and perspectives. One of the most important principles in LLA is addressing structural inequalities faced by women, youth, children, people with disabilities, people who are displaced, indigenous peoples, and marginalized ethnic groups. How do we move forward with this? In many communities, promoting economic opportunities through job training, entrepreneurship support, and vocational education are developed and facilitated by NGOs and civil society organizations in partnership with the local government. In most cases, policies that encourage equal pay for equal work, regardless of gender, ethnicity, or disability status, are promoted. In many parts of Southeast Asia, the duration of maternity leave for employees has been extended from 16 weeks to 26 weeks. This change aims to provide mothers with ample time to adapt to their new roles as parents. Simultaneously, paternity leave has been extended to two months, allowing fathers the opportunity to equally share the responsibility of caregiving with their spouses or partners. Local governments have implemented various policies and initiatives aimed at fostering a more welcoming workplace environment for women. From time to time, disasters have devastated local communities and their livelihoods, but more recently, the frequency of natural and human-induced events has increased. The most common disasters include those brought about by climate change, such as extreme weather including tropical revolving storms, hurricanes, typhoons and cyclones, abnormal dry, hot and cold weather, floods and droughts, and human and other disease outbreaks. During and following disasters, existing gender norms tend to exacerbate and historically lower engagement of women in critical institutions responding to the disasters. The lack of data on what women and other vulnerable groups do can affect effective climate change adaptation measures, especially if we are going towards encouraging all sectors of the community to participate and take the lead. For example, the lack of knowledge and information on how important these groups' contribution to the economy or in community efforts will downplay their agency and will exclude them from participating in consultations and actions. For example, women are expected to take on larger responsibilities for care at home and in the community during disasters, preventing them from doing paid work. However, in most cases, they are not included in decision-making interventions and even in relief distribution. So they put on hard work and sacrifices to ensure the family household and community are functioning well, but their needs are not considered and interventions and actions do not address these needs. Another example of ignoring women and other vulnerable groups within the community is when cash assistance and paid disaster relief work are offered, and they mostly go to men and able-bodied individuals, without consideration of inequity issues within the community. Sometimes, only those living near the main government areas are included and benefit, but those living remotely, as most Indigenous peoples are, are excluded. Staff involved in adaptation initiatives should be equipped to integrate gender equality and social inclusion aspects, especially when working with communities. 
They should recognize and take into account the fact that women, youth, children, people with disabilities, those who are displaced, indigenous peoples, and marginalized ethnic groups also have local knowledge that can be tapped for adaptation measures and initiatives. By bringing them into the design table, LLA will ensure that their interests and needs are taken into consideration, including during decision-making, budgeting and programming, and in monitoring progress. Oftentimes, initiatives and efforts in the community cannot be sustained due to the inadequacy of resources that will create an enabling environment for the stakeholders. Thus, there is a need to provide accessible financing. On November 28, 2022, World Bank Group released its publication on unleashing sustainable finance in Southeast Asia. It states that climate change mitigation and adaptation are much needed across the region and that the financial sector can play a critical role in supporting countries in their journey toward greater resilience and sustainability. To unleash sustainable finance, the policymakers should create an enabling environment to mobilize private capitals towards sustainability. While climate-related risks affect the entire ASEAN region, the progress in implementing sustainable finance initiatives has not been consistent among member countries. This variation can be attributed to differences in economic and financial development levels and institutional capacities. A number of examples can be found from the ASEAN DRRCCA project, an initiative under the ASEAN Committee on Disaster Management, supported by the Government of Japan through Japan ASEAN Integration Fund. The project bridges local knowledge and capacity gaps by employing qualitative and quantitative approaches and community-based disaster risk management to determine the nature and extent of risks by analyzing existing conditions of exposure, sensitivity, adaptive capacity and selective case study area in Myanmar and Lao PDR, Phase 1, 2018 to 2020. Below are a few of the case studies available at the link. Thailand Case Study Locally established landslide warning durian fund in Uttaradit province. Villagers donate two to three durian fruits per house to the fund. These durians are transformed to pool of fund to support the community DRM network activities and disaster management. Lao case study. Community early warning and DRM local planning process in Pukun district. Myanmar case study. Carried out 200 vulnerability and capacity assessment slash questionnaire survey with team of students and villagers. Malaysia case study. Conjunctive use of recycled and fresh irrigation water has helped mitigate drought impacts in the Perlis region of Malaysia, and the expansion of conservation agriculture is helping subsistence farmers in buffering crops from rainfall-related shocks. A case study in the Philippines features how a local community designed their own climate-resilient neighborhood. Eco-Business website featured this story, which showed how a small community that is socially, economically, and politically marginalized can meaningfully participate in making decisions about how they can adapt to ensure a better human well-being. This is an example of Pasig City's Mangahan project in Metro Manila. According to this news feature article, in 2009, when one of the strongest typhoons named Ondoy hit the Philippines, 40,000 people in informal settlements or slums were living along the Mangahan floodway, which is an artificially constructed waterway for flood risk mitigation. In less than 24 hours, Typhoon Ondoy poured a month's worth of rain in Metro Manila, resulting in the loss of lives, property, and possessions. After this happened, the national government decided to relocate the slum dwellers to locations outside Metro Manila, some nearly 100 kilometers away. Moving to these relocation areas means that people would leave their families, jobs, and schools behind. This decision was made without any consultation with the affected community. In fact, threats to demolish houses were made if people did not follow the evacuation directive. As a result, the people in the area, led by those who are living nearby, responded by forming a group called Alliance of People's Organizations along Mangahan Floodway to fight for the rights of families to housing and land and to remain in their city. One of the NGO partners shared their belief that people should have the capacity to organize with the local government and be consulted at all levels. This is what is needed to make communities resilient in the face of adversities, such as those resulting from climate change impacts. The APO AMF then proceeded to find alternative solutions to eviction through a community-based participatory process. They consulted with one another and with experts like working with an architect and local and national government officials on the location and design of a housing complex featuring strong materials, thick walls and ceilings, elevated water tanks, and strategic placement of structural beams to make the apartment stronger and the area more resilient to floods and typhoons. 
More information can be obtained from the EcoBusiness article entitled, What Locally Led Climate Resilience Looks Like in the Philippines. In terms of investing in local capabilities to leave an institutional legacy, building the capacities of local actors and communities is important in sustaining the mechanism for LLA. Investing in local capabilities is a key strategy for ensuring the sustainability of initiatives by promoting community engagement, leveraging local knowledge, and fostering a sense of ownership and responsibility among those most directly affected by the conservation efforts. This approach increases the likelihood of long-term success in preserving biodiversity and ecosystems. Local knowledge and local capabilities allow for more adaptive and context-specific conservation strategies. Local communities can respond to changes and challenges in the ecosystem more effectively as they are on the ground and intimately connected to the environment. Local communities often have existing social networks and institutions that can be leveraged for conservation efforts. These networks could be valuable for spreading awareness, organizing activities, and implementing conservation practices. Local communities often have a long-term commitment to the land and resources they depend on, and they are more likely to sustain conservation efforts over time. External organizations may come and go, but local communities have a vested interest in the ongoing success of these initiatives. Indeed, investing in local capabilities, either through training, education, and community engagement initiatives, can empower community members with the skills and knowledge needed to actively participate in conservation initiatives. For example, think of a community along a mangrove area, wherein the residents do not know how to use the resources they have, and compare it with another mangrove community whose people have been trained in how to manage the area. When organizations came into these areas, the people in the first community were not consulted, and the organization assigned there immediately provided intervention on waste reduction. However, they did not succeed as there was no community or social preparation process. The community later experienced storm surges and flooding as the people continued to cut down mangroves. However, with the second community, the organization assigned to them knew about social preparation and the power of locally led approaches. They did not experience storm surges and flooding as they were trained in mangrove area management and other topics related to natural resources management. In building a robust understanding of climate risk and uncertainty, having a complete understanding of the effects of climate change and the underlying conditions are essential in developing strategies and initiatives. It is crucial for the policymakers as well as the communities to make informed decisions backed up by science and data. For example, a certain community has a strong commitment to sustainability. How will they make sure that they will be able to formulate strategies and initiatives and build a deep understanding of climate change. Of course, they have to gather data to support their claims through conducting participatory community assessments, seeking help from scientific groups and relevant government agencies. This data will inform the planning sessions of the group in order for them to create solutions and allow them to thrive and adapt to a changing climate landscape. Flexible learning and programming for LLA will demonstrate the effectiveness of tailoring adaptation strategies to local contexts, needs, and capabilities. By embracing flexibility in learning methods and the integration of traditional knowledge, this initiative will empower the community to develop and implement climate resilient solutions, ultimately improving their livelihoods and strengthening their resilience to climate change. Such approaches hold promise for future climate adaptation efforts in vulnerable communities worldwide. Several NGOs have developed educational programs and initiatives that raise awareness about climate change, its impacts, and the actions individuals and communities can take to mitigate and adapt to it. Some have created partnerships with schools, universities, and educational institutions to incorporate climate change curriculum into their programs. Several groups have established climate adaptation programs to help communities prepare for the impacts of climate change, such as extreme weather events and sea level rise through setting up of community savings groups financial literacy programs, and the like. Conclusion. It is essential to engage local communities, organizations, and relevant stakeholders from the beginning of the adaptation process. In working with communities, it is also important to take into consideration gender equity and social inclusion, so various groups are represented and are given a level playing field. In particular, those who are often overlooked, such as women, youth, disabled, the elderly, indigenous peoples, among others. Their participation and input are crucial for ensuring transparency and accountability. It is also important that these actors have access to resources, information, and clear guidelines on decision-making processes that are made with local input and feedback. Monitoring and evaluating systems should also be in place. Channels for feedback and complaints are created to ensure concerns are addressed promptly 
and pay special attention to the needs of vulnerable and marginalized members of the community. By following some of these best practices, it can help ensure that LLA to climate change is transparent, accountable, and effective in building resilience and reducing vulnerabilities in local communities. For more examples of LLA, explore the publication by Koger et al. 2022 on locally led adaptation, from principles to practice.